All right, so let's say based on things we've talked about previously, a population has been identified that is small, has low genetic diversity, is suffering from inbreeding depression, has low evolutionary potential. What can we do about it? Well, so what we'll talk about in this video is potential ways we can do a technique called genetic rescue to help increase the health and survival of that population. So one thing you can do is translocate or move individuals from one population to another to increase genetic diversity. Remember, if you're moving new individuals in that have new alleles, gene flow happens and that increases genetic diversity. You're also bringing in new alleles that are not related to the high homozygosity alleles those inbred individuals already have, so you can reduce inbreeding. This picture here is one example of a bird that is being translocated, moved to a new population. And so say we've moved individuals, we can say that that leads to this process of genetic rescue if that translocation increases genetic diversity and also decreases inbreeding depression. So this example shown here is from a paper that came out in very recently, and they were looking at different populations of fish, different guppies in different river systems, and they manipulated gene flow. So they moved some individuals, they translocated them from one location to the other. And so you can see here in this graph on the far right, with this red arrow is where they initiated gene flow, or essentially they moved individuals. At that point, the population size, which is shown on the y-axis, was very, very low. But what you can see is that through time, the population size actually increased a lot. And so because we see this increased population, that is one sign of genetic rescue that indicates translocation helps to increase the fitness of this population and the population size was able to grow. Oftentimes that increased population size is actually due to something called heterosis or often sometimes called hybrid vigor. And what this is, is elevated fitness in the offspring of individuals that are genetically different. So this, this example, excuse me, shown on the right, which I just realized is actually in a different language. I don't know what language this is, but these two corns in the middle are hybrids, which were produced from parents that are genetically different. And so what happens is when you breed those two different genetically different individuals, you end up with a hybrid that has increased fitness. So this corn is actually bigger and in the example with the fish I showed previously, it leads to this increased population growth because of this hybrid vigor. So a classic example of a success story in terms of translocation and genetic rescue is with the Florida puma, which is shown here on the left. This was an inbred population that was suffering from all types of problems, phenotype difference, phenotype effects, including things like the kinked tail that's shown here. And so what they did is move eight pumas from Texas into this Florida population. So same type of thing in this graph, the y-axis is the number of panthers, the x-axis is time. And here with this arrow, we're indicating when individuals were translocated and moved. And we again here have evidence of genetic rescue because we can see the population numbers drastically increase after this addition of new individuals. So essentially this assisted gene flow that happened. So overall, they've done different studies and they found that the benefits of this genetic rescue can last for three or more generations. So this table that I have excerpted from this review paper here is showing that across these different generations. So F1 is the first generation of hybrids and then F2 and F3. Oftentimes nerdy scientists will call their first child an F1. Um, so we have these different generations and what's shown here is that by surveying a bunch of different translocations that were done, they found 
cases that were beneficial, they found beneficial effects not only in the first F1 generation, but also in the F3 generation or later. So in terms of how effective this technique can be and how long the effect lasts, current data indicates at least for three generations. And so overall, this technique isn't used super often, and we'll talk in the next video about why there are some hesitations, but recent reviews and papers have indicated that really there should be a paradigm shift to use this technique of gene flow restoration as a management tool for fragmented populations. So a recent review estimated that there are really only about 30 cases in which they did this translocation of plants or animals to have this genetic rescue happen to help a threatened population. So really, if we have these two populations that might be isolated, we really should be thinking about whether we can assist gene flow and translocate some individuals to help facilitate this to help increase genetic diversity, reduce inbreeding, and promote this genetic rescue of these otherwise threatened and isolated populations.